All right, in 10.7, we're going to begin by graphing parametric equations. We already did a little bit of this in the beginning part of 10.6. So the first uh, couple slides here are going to be pretty easy. But um, we are going to take a look at some how to do it with some trig functions as well. And I'm going to give you a little trick there. It's going to make that easier. So let's get started. So graphing parametric equations by plotting points is what we've already seen. What you can do here, I've got my parametric equations. Remember, x is a function of time and y is a function of time. So some object is moving around the plane. That's what the parametric part of this does. Now, all you do is you graph it like you would before. I've got my values for x and my values of y. But what's different is that we've added a t column. So both x and y, normally if you do this, x and y, x um, is the independent variable, y is dependent. So if you, it's supposed to be a y there, if you pick values of x, any values of x you want, you find out what values of y go with it. Well here, both of these are now dependent on t. So we can pick any values of t that we want, and we find the corresponding values not only of y, but also of x. So in other words, pick values of t and find what the x and the y would be. And I totally showed you this earlier. You just graph it just like you would. You're just still doing the x and y points. You graph that. The only thing that's changed is that time is creating a direction. What direction are we moving as we plot these points? So as we're moving from the negative t's to the positive t's, our points are going in this direction. So we add those arrows. Okay, so the same idea here. What we've got, I've got t, I've got x sub t, and y sub t. So what's changed with parametric is that I'm going to arbitrarily pick the values of t, although they did tell us they wanted us to go between 0 and 3. So here's a pretty natural selection, 0, 1, 2, and 3. I plug those values in, so I'm not going to do all of these, but x equals the square root of 0 is just 0. So if I put 0 in for t here, I get y is 3. I'll do one more here. So square root of 1 is 1. So I'm putting one, I'm putting the values of t into both equations this time to plot my points. So y, if I plug t as 1, I'd get 2 times 1 plus 3, and I get 5. Now you could continue to do that, but here's the graph that you're going to get. You get this graph here, but because it's parametric, we also have the movement over time. So we have arrows saying that we started here and we're heading in this direction. So we've added the arrows. Now, let's try doing this with uh, tr trigonometric functions. This is going to make it a little bit different and a little bit harder, but I'm going to show you a trick in just a second. So this is how they did it. I'll show you the trick when, when they leave them to me to do. So they've picked, just like we did, we have the x and y. They're both in terms of time. So we're going to arbitrarily pick values of t. Well, we're just picking different uh, radian angles for t and finding their trig functions. Now, do notice this. They're picking obvious ones. They're picking ones that we know from the unit circle. They're getting the values, and then they're going to graph those points, just like before. OK, now you're going to need to find like the square roots to get an actual number that you could put it on the graph. But so we get the same idea. We are moving in this direction, so we've added the arrows like this. Okay, now let me show you my little trick here. Um, here's our graph. Now, what we could have done is gone through all those trig values. Oops. Now, we could arbitrarily pick values of t, and we could plot all the points. Now, the problem is the numbers are going to be really difficult, you know, because we're working with these fractions we're like estimating like 1.7 all of these things now it'll work it'll get you there but let me show you a little trick let's take the maximum values let's find the values at these different axes so what I'm saying is let's just pick four points we're gonna pick 0 we're gonna pick pi over 2 we're gonna pick pi and 3 pi over 2 and this is going to be all the information I need to graph this. It's also going to give me nice even points. So if I put 0 into this function, cosine of 0 is 1 times 5. This gets me the maximum value that I'm going to get here. I'm going to get 5. So I get a real easy point. Now if I put 0 into this one, it's all going to drop out, right? Because sine of 0 is 0. So I get 5, 0. Nice easy point. Now let's move to this point on the axis. If I pick pi over 2, sine of 
pi over 2 is 1, so 1 times 3 gets me 3. If I put pi over 2 into here, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this drops out. So if you see what I'm doing, I've selected these points on the axis because it will easily allow me to just get these four corner points. And now it's got to be moving in a way that connects it, so it's going to have to create the oval. And I have the movement. If I started here, I know I'm headed in this direction. So and by avoiding all of the more difficult locations, I mean, you could do it if you wanted. You can estimate them. You'll get there, but this would be much faster. I'm just doing the four values on the axes and knowing that I'm moving in this direction. Okay, so same idea there. They're doing exactly the same thing. Um, yeah, their values here are... I don't know why they've switched here, but their values of t are not in radians anymore. So they're just picking values of t between zero. Does it tell them to do this? I don't. I don't know. They've just picked random values of t, and they're not in radians. I don't know. I don't know what made them make that switch here. But so anyway, same idea. They're just picking values for t, just like before. Point five zero. Is this the same equation? No, not quite, but pretty much. Okay, pretty much the same equation. So, okay, now what they weren't choosing radians this time. So, and I don't know why they designated that. They didn't say that they weren't going to do that. But so they just plotted points here, but they didn't use radians. So that's going to get us some more difficult answers. Yeah, so what they could have done here. Yeah, the, let me show you this. Do you remember we did this earlier? So what we see here, if we're giving these two trig functions, we saw this in, in, in section 10.6, I could solve both of these for cosine of t, sine of t, sine, uh, solve them. Now, if I go ahead and use the Pythagorean identity, I get cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1. So I'm going to get x to the fifth squared plus y, or sorry, x over 5 squared y over 2 squared equals 1. And so what they've created here, where is it? They've created this function right here, which is an ellipse, which we'll see more of coming later. But so they converted it and they knew the value well, you know, actually, we haven't talked about this yet, but we will. It talks about the values of the axes in each direction. You could have graphed it like that. So, again, it's the same premise. We could have just picked points. And because, they, because they've because they left radians, it got a little more difficult. They can't, I can't use my trick here. But, um, but nonetheless, it still graphs out the same way. Pick your values of t, plot your points. Okay, uh, let's see, what do we got here? Not much. They're just asking us to do the rectangular and the parametric on the same graph. It's not going to do anything. So all you would do here, just I, I would just graph it just like you've done by picking t, x sub t, and y sub t. And you know you're going to get the same picture. The only difference with the parametric is it's going to have the arrows. So you're going to follow the same path. That's the point. So they pick values for t. They've gone from 1 to, say, 9. Arbitrarily pick those values. Well, actually, they said x is greater than or equal to 0. So we should have started at 0, 1, 2. Just pick some points. Now, the parametric is going to add the direction, but the non-parametric is going to be the same exact shape. OK. Yeah, so I guess, I guess the reason we can say this is in radians is because this has theta. So. We have theta here, and so we're asked to sketch the graph of this. This is where I would, once again, I would use my trick. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick values of theta. That correspond to the axes. So I'm going to pick 0. I'm going to pick pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. And again, the reason is it's going to make the math super easy. Put 0 into cosine, I get 1. So 2 times 1 is 1. The sine is going to be 0 there, so it'll drop out. Pi over 2. Let's put pi over 2 in, and well, the cosine will drop out and make that 0. 
pi over 2 into this one, 4 sine of pi over 2. Well, sine of pi over 2 is 1. We're going to get 4. So look what we're getting. Again, we're getting the key points without having to do it all. So if you put pi in, you get negative 1 for cosine. So you get negative 2. Oh, wait a minute. This should have been a 2 up here. This is negative 2, 0. And then you're going to get 0, negative 4. So I've picked the super easy points, so I could graph those. And if you see the direction that we're headed, we're headed counterclockwise. Okay, so there's really not too much new there. I think we probably got the idea before. The only thing there is that we were also doing trigonometric functions, which is a little harder if you're trying to plot all the points. But I was trying to show you that trick that if you, if you choose the values of the axes, then it's going to make plotting it pretty straightforward and easy.